Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be fixing this TI-83 calculator. As you can see, it's got this kind of mark on the screen here. And then when I actually turn the screen on, all I get is this line. When I type numbers in, nothing pops up. The line slowly disappears. I don't know what that means. Um, so what we're going to do is take the screws out, take the batteries out for now, open this thing up, then we'll use our soldering iron to hopefully kind of reflow the solder that's behind some of the, con the connectors in there. Let's see, I forget what I'm using here. This is a... T6 kind of star nut there. It's a real tiny. And we're going to get these screws off the back. So let me pause the, or let me put you all on pause here for a second. I'll get back with you once I got these screws out. All right, so I got all one, two, three, four, five, six screws out. Of note, these ones on the bottom were a little bit deeper. So actually, when I had my bit in the screwdriver, you can see how it kind of sinks in there a little bit. And that was too deep for this to get in. So I actually had to take this out, put it down there, and twist it. This one was stripped a little bit, so I actually had to use a T7 to get this last one out. Um, but you may run into that issue as well. Uh, so let's try and get this thing open. And here's something kind of rattling around in there. That's not a good sign. Let me get this open. I'll get back with you guys. All right. So on further inspection, you also have to take the screw out right here uh, or take the battery door off. And then now you open it a little bit and you get a pry tool in there. If you can. We'll start working our way around, not going too deep. That came, uh, came apart fairly easily. You can see this little plastic thing was broken already. So kind of the screw deal. Here's the back side of it. Here's the front side. Next thing we're going to do is take out these two screws at the bottom. Just two Phillips screws. Take this little shield off. So this should come out pretty easy. They're coming out easy right now. these over to the side plastic shield kind of peels off I guess it's sort of glued down there there it goes comes off and so basically these two ribbon cables are the issue um, the first one is this ribbon cable up here attaches to this board and the, there's like an adhesive on here that gets loose over time, and that's what causes the pixels not to work as well. And then you kind of lift this back. Let's see if you can see it on camera here. But the uh, cable attaches up here as well. So basically you heat up this. You take the soldering iron that we have over there on a low setting, and you heat the, this up. You heat it up right here, you get those contact points to contact again. And then you heat up this cable as well. And then ideally you pull this up, there it goes. If I can get it. 
and you heat it up right there as well. Um, and then hopefully that gets all the contacts and the screen will work again. So let me get my soldering iron set up and we will get this all fixed up. All right, so I got my soldering iron turned down to its lowest setting, which is 176. If I can get it out of here. And I have this uh, kind of beveled flat tip on here, which should be perfect for pressing these ribbon cables down and heating up and heating that adhesive up. Um, so basically we'll start here and we'll just kind of go along press down this ribbon cable, kind of, we'll do this in basically a bunch of different, different angles, trying to get everything heated up here. And again, 176, that's the lowest my soldering iron goes down to, so hopefully that's not too hot, because you don't want to melt the plastic. Just want to get it heated up here and connected. Just working our way along here, taking our time, getting everything pressed, pressed down, back together. And just applying kind of some gentle pressure. Again, you don't want to tear the uh, cable. Just want to get it heated up enough to get the adhesive to kind of reactivate and stick together. Then we're also going to do it on this side. Kind of this is where the cable kind of connects to the glass through a thermal adhesive. Just kind of work our way down. Hopefully this is hot enough to get it to kind of heat up. I was considering using just like a heat gun on this and I think the only major disadvantage would be that you don't apply the pressure here to get the contacts to kind of meet back together. All right, so we're done hopefully with that cable. We'll move down to this bottom or this middle kind of lower cable. And there's again two spots here with this cable and we'll just heat it up kind of work our way along the top part here and then we'll do the bottom part and be gentle as gentle as you can it's kind of like a bob ross sort of exercise here it feels kind of like you're painting with these little strokes we're doing Then we'll kind of work our way across it again. And then we'll do the same thing down here on this lower section of the cable. And it'll be interesting to see if this works because it's not very satisfying to do because it kind of looks like it's already attached on there. 
Hopefully this isn't just a complete failure. But there's several other videos on YouTube where they do this, so if you're not getting the information you need here, feel free to go check those ones out as well. But hopefully this will work. All right. Let's do another pass up here. It's another pass on this cable. Then we'll put our soldering iron back up. Turn it off. Line our screen back up. Then we'll put our foil backing back on. And while I'm here, I'll do an inspection. Kind of see if there's anything else obviously wrong. Which I'm not seeing anything. These little Phillips screws back in. Screw number one. And see if we can get screw number two lined up. So getting close to kind of the moment of truth here. We can go ahead and put our backing back on. Seems to snap together pretty good. Grab some batteries. Adjust our screen here. We're still not getting much. Yeah, still kind of doing the same thing it was before with that line. Let me see if I can show you guys better on camera. This line pops up and then fades away. And it still has this pixelated part up here. And then we grab some new batteries, make sure that isn't the issue. But it seems like our first attempt did not work on this. Yeah, so I tried you know new batteries and still the same result. Just can't really get this screen to work. Um, so this was a fail. Um, let me know if you guys have any other suggestions on what we can do. Essentially, I have like this problem here. I'd like for that little smudge there to go away. And then when I do turn it on, a line goes across and that's it. And then it kind of fades away and I can't get anything to go on there. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. Um, I'll be, I have another TI-83 over here I'm going to repair. Hopefully this one will be easier. And uh, so subscribe if you want to see that video. And I'm also going to be repairing this Nintendo Game Boy. Basically, they all have the same issue with our similar issues, it seems like, with the screens not working, our missing pixels, and that's what I'm trying to fix. Um, but if you guys appreciate the content, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you got any questions. I'll catch you all next time.